Hey YouTubers, I'm here with a discussion on depth of field. This is a response to uh, my video that I posted some time ago asking for video ideas. And I had a couple of folks that asked about depth of field and how it works. And I'm going to do a real low-tech presentation here. I did come up with a way to hopefully make it a little more visual. It has to do with using a Hasselblad lens, an old-school one, uh, to demonstrate it. Anyway, let's get started. First off, what is depth of field? I won't use scientific explanations here. I'm going to be very practical about things. Depth of field is the, the sort of acceptable in-focus area uh, of a photograph. For example, let's say you focused on something that's 10 feet away from you. Depending on how you have your lens set up, that object and some objects in front and some objects behind it can be in focus or very little can be in focus on either side of that focus point or you could pretty much have everything in focus and that's all dependent on the things that are on my list here so let's start talking about what depth of field is based upon the Three things that it's based upon are your focal length, aperture, and focus distance. And it doesn't matter. These, these three things are independent of the size of film that you're using or the size of the sensor you're using. A 500 millimeter lens is a 500 millimeter lens. So keep that in mind. We'll get into the other relationship in a moment. But for now, let's just stick with that a depth of field is based only on focal length, aperture, and focus distance. So, how do those things affect depth of field? Hold any two of those three things equal. And a longer lens will have shallower depth of field than a shorter lens with aperture and focus distance held constant. A wider aperture, meaning a smaller F number, will give you shallower depth of field with the other two variables held constant. A shorter focus distance gives you shallower depth of field with the other two items held constant. So the flip side of that is true too. So if you want deeper depth of field, meaning more things in focus from front to back, you'll get more of that with a shorter lens or a smaller aperture meaning a larger number f number or a longer focal distance or focus distance so that's how those things kind of interchange and if you are one of those folks that wants short depth of field for certain effects say with portraits this list tells you what to look for. You're going to want to look for probably a longer focal length, probably with a, the largest aperture you can afford or can stand to carry. You're going to want to shoot at shorter focus distances. So how do you put this into practice? Let's just, stick, let's just say you're shooting a 35 millimeter camera. And on a 35 millimeter camera, a normal lens is 50 millimeters, we'll say. And that is a lens that's good for most purposes. Uh, it's a good portrait lens, but it's not a great portrait lens. Generally, people who want a great portrait lens will probably look for, let's say, a 90 millimeter lens or an 85. Why do they do that? Because the 85 millimeter lens is longer than the 50 millimeter lens. It's going to give you shallower depth of field at a given aperture. So, for example, I have a Leica R8. I have a 50 millimeter Summicron. That's an F2 lens. And I have a 90 millimeter Summicron. That's an F2 lens. The 90 millimeter Summicron is going to give me shorter depth of field. There's a flip side to depth of field. It's not always shallow that we want. So you get deep depth of field by shortening your lens, closing down your aperture, or lengthening your focus distance. What you'll notice is shooting what people will call a wide-angle lens, 
you'll find that generally a wide angle lens gives you deeper depth of field. And uh, that's pretty common because there aren't a whole lot of super fast wide angle lenses, meaning there aren't a lot of wide angle lenses that give you huge apertures, which would also give you a short depth of field. So those are some of the trade-offs. Now let's let's bring the the sort of next dimension of this in. And again, I'm being practical here. I'm probably going to miss some technical detail or get some technical things wrong. But what I want to try to communicate is how you can think about the problem of depth of field or the topic of depth of field. So let's talk about field of view for a second. Um, field of view is how wide or narrow the scene in front of you is taken in by the lens. A narrow field of view is like this, and a wide field of view is like this. Telephoto lenses generally have a narrow field of view, and wide angles have very wide fields of view. So let's hold field of view constant and say that, you know, I want a normal sort of field of view, and on a 35 millimeter camera, that's generally considered to be 46 degrees. So that's what I want. Now let's look at what I have to actually mount on different cameras to get that field of view. As I said, on a 35, that's a 50 millimeter. On a 6x9, because the film is so much bigger, you need a correspondingly longer lens to get that same field of view. So you're going to have to put a 90 on it, roughly, to get that same field of view on your negative. On a crop digital camera, to get this field of view, you're going to mount something like a 35 millimeter lens. Compacts vary a lot because the sensor sizes vary a lot, but let's just say, well, it might be only 18 millimeters. That's because you've got a really wide angle lens, but there's only a little bit of its field of view being captured. So, what is the side effect of this? In other words, what, which has the deepest depth of field at a given aperture and focus? Because of the rules above, the 18 millimeter lens has the deepest depth of field, meaning more stuff in focus. This is why, if you like the look of shallow depth of field, you like beautiful bokeh, you're not going to want to shoot one of these. It's very difficult to get very shallow depth of field with a compact camera, unless it has a huge aperture, um, and that's fairly uncommon as well. This Sony that I'm shooting right now, um, to do this video, you can see I've got some shallow depth of field. Why is that? That's because I have this so close to the page, it's only about six inches away. So, anyway, my point is, you're not going to get good bokeh uh, with a compact camera in general. And this is why people like to kind of go up the scale into the larger sizes. I kind of didn't do the best job ordering these. I wanted to put the common thing up top and then go down. So with a, for example, a large format camera, uh, a normal field of view lens might be, I don't know, 150 millimeter, maybe more. It depends on the size of the film. So you start getting ultra short depth of field. Actually, short depth of field starts becoming a problem on those cameras. And that's why they have the movements so that you can control the depth of field even beyond um, using the aperture on the lens. So a lot of view camera folks will shoot at very, very small apertures. The lenses go down to f64 a lot of the time. And then they use the movements to get stuff in focus because the, the depth of field is so shallow on those cameras. So onto the sort of practical demonstration of this. I have here, um, it's a Hasselblad lens, it's a 120 millimeter lens, and this is an old school uh, C lens. One of the cool things about these cameras is they have kind of a moving, almost like a slide rule, um, to show you your depth of field. Up here is my um, aperture and shutter speed, which are locked together at the moment. They're always locked together. On these lenses and you have to kind of hold a tab down to unlock them. So what I wanted to demonstrate is I have the, the lens set like it's focused at four feet. What these red bars here show is the 
point of closest focus and the point of furthest acceptable focus. In other words, the depth of field is contained between the two. So at four feet, you can see we've got, oh, from about 3.8 feet to about 4.2 feet, we'll say. That would be in focus at f11 or somewhere, just this kind of in between, uh, at f11. Now what happens if I open the lens up? You see those guys moving together? The depth of field is shrinking. If I move towards f32 and close the lens down, the depth of field is spreading out. Now what happens when I start focusing things farther away? You'll notice that the numbers start getting closer together. So now, at, at 10 feet, I'm encompassing about 7.5 feet to about 15 feet. That's a lot more distance than, I'm, what are we going to say, 8 feet? Just a guesstimate. Go back to 4, so we had 8 feet of depth of field at 10 feet, 3.5 to 4.5, about a foot. Now I'm just wildly estimating, but you get the point. Closer I get towards infinity, Look at this. Infinity, I'm going to put the infinity mark at the edge of the depth of focus here. And so at f32, I should be in focus from, it looks like, oh, around 12 feet all the way out to infinity. This is the way you can do um, hyperfocal distancing with uh, a lens that has a depth of field scale. You choose your depth of field and then you put infinity at the far point of your depth of field scale. It's best to be a little conservative and put infinity within the range. So now the hyperfocal distance of this lens is, we'll just say it's about 13 feet. Now I can mount this on a camera and take a shot provided I have sufficient light and everything from 13 feet to infinity will be in focus. So just as a contrast, this is a, remember, this is a 120 millimeter, I think, or is it 110? Yeah, it's 120. And this shoots mm, kind of like a portrait lens on Hasselblad. I don't know what the equivalent is, but it has a narrower field of view than the 80 millimeter lens. So let's demonstrate this same principle on another lens. This is a 50 millimeter Hasselblad. So this has a wide field of view. This is a short focal length lens. Let me set it to 4 feet. So let's set it on 32, F32, at 4 feet. We don't have a marking on this side, but let's say it's a little less than 3 feet at F22, or sorry, F32, out to 15 feet, 2 something feet to 15 feet, versus 3.6-ish to four and a half feet. Long-winded way of saying this has a much shallower depth of field at f32 than this lens. So uh, that's kind of also a demonstration of how to use your depth of field scale on lenses. So um, hopefully this helps you understand the relationships between um, focal length, uh, aperture, distance, and sensor or film size. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more. Talk to you later.